Hello and welcome to our channel Empower with Knowledge. My name is Rahul and today we will be discussing the IMF declaration of the world being in recession in 2020. Before you move any further, please click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to receive all further updates and leave a like and comment on our page to let us know what your thoughts are. Also, please share to your friends so that everyone else can also know about it. Now, before proceeding any further about the IMF declaration, we need to understand what the IMF is and how it differentiates or how it's different from the World Bank. Now, IMF is the International Monetary Fund. It is an international organization which is created to make sure that there is monetary cooperation and financial stability amongst its member states. So in case if there is any member state who needs money so that they can borrow that money from the IMF. Now it was founded on 27 December 1945 in Washington DC and it has currently got 189 countries as its member states. Right now the managing director is Christina Georgieva and the chief economist is Geeta Gopinath and obviously the parent organization is in the United Nations. Now the way the IMF works is that all the countries who are a part of the IMF, all the 189 countries, they contribute their funds through a pool system and it's a quota system through which there is a quota and that quota needs to be paid by every country. It's like we might say that it's almost like an EMI, an EMI which we are paying to go ahead and to ensure that our debt is paid instead of paying off the debt this EMI is given by the countries to ensure that there is a liquid amount of cash available so that the countries can borrow that amount or borrow an amount if there is any problem or if the country needs some funds urgently right now as of 2016 as per the last update there is about 667 billion dollars USD which is with the IMF. Now just for an example we can just determine how the countries are giving or what the quotas are. So basically in case of the EU member states, EU member states will or rather they are paying a huge amount they are paying 32% of the IMF entire fund. United States bears 17%. Japan bears 6.1%, China 3.7%, Saudi Arabia 3.2% and so on. So these are the different percentage through which the different countries contribute towards the IMF. Now let's come to the benefit of the IMF. As I discussed previously countries can borrow money from the IMF whenever there is a requirement. So this right of the countries to borrow money is known as SDR. A special drawing rights. This is an monetary reserve currency which is of international valuation which is also created by the IMF in 1969 which is a supplement to the existing money reserves in the member countries. So every member country has their own cash reserve which they can use in case of crisis. But the money which is stored in the IMF this is valued in such a way that this money can also be used in case of any emergency along with the monetary reserve of any particular country. Now, if we go ahead and if we check uh, the details of the different functions that IMF does, the different functions of the IMF are surveillance and gathering data and assessing the economic policies of different countries. That is the main thing. So IMF goes out and they collect a huge amount of data in regards to what the countries are doing, how their monetary situation is, how much the country's liquid assets are and what are the things that the country has which might cause problems in the future. The IMF keeps note of it so that it can determine whether or not a country is at the verge of getting into a recession. If a country goes into a recession, in that case the IMF needs to inject money into that country as well to help save it from recession and from failing overall as a country. The IMF also provides technical assistance and strengthens the human skills and institutional capacities of the countries and the different reserve banks of the countries. 
so the IMF also provides different types of uh, teaching capabilities for example the IMF conducts regular workshops at all the different reserve banks and uh, provides help and assistance in helping them understand where the problems are if there are any problems how they can improve their services and so on they also cause uh, help with financial assistance like a banker and they lend to different countries helping them support reforms now the way let's just quickly discuss how it differs from the world bank now in case of the world bank world bank is a global organization which is established for finance and advice to the developing nations however the imf was organized and created to maintain the global monetary system for imf the main focus is on economic stability for the countries whereas the world bank provides economic growth now in case of the imf it's a single organization and in case of the world bank it has two major institutions one is the international bank of reconstruction and development and the international development association for imf we have got 189 countries who are members and for the world bank we have got 188 countries as members for the international bank for reconstruction and development and for international development association we have got 172 countries the objective of the imf is to deal with all the issues related to financial sector and macroeconomics and the objective of the world bank is to lessen poverty and promote long term development of the economy so the basic focus of the imf is to help countries which are going into recession and to identify them and to inject cash in them so that they can stave off recession and so that the countries can save themselves the main focus of the world bank is in ensuring that countries take money they take loans from the world bank in order to cause economic growth in order to create more projects for the country which would help in supporting a country and creating economic growth now as per imf the world is now in recession the coronavirus situation has driven the global economy into a downturn which would require a huge amount of funding to help the developing nations this is the latest update that was provided by the IMF chief, Kristalina Georgieva. So what has happened is due to the coronavirus situation, now there has been a huge number of people and investors who have been taking off their money from different markets and that has caused a severe crash and meltdown in different economies. And that is the reason that the IMF says that the world has now gotten into a recession. It is clear that we have entered a recession which will be worse than the one in 2009, she has informed. And along with the worldwide economic stop, it is also estimated that the total financial needs of emerging markets is over 2.5 trillion. Now, 2.5 trillion US dollars is a huge amount. And as we can already understand from now, 2.5 trillion is a lot, lot more then what the total amount of money that's there in the IMF's fund. So injecting that amount of money to save the world economies is going to be extremely difficult if not downright impossible. And that is why the IMF is cautiously informing that the world is now slowly entering the recession. Now she has also informed that 2.5 trillion estimate might be on the lower end. Now that is even more of a risk if she says it's on the lower end that means that the higher end can be much much more she has it has been estimated by the imf that the governments in emerging emerging markets which have suffered an exodus of capital of more than 83 billion dollars can cover much of that but the domestic resources and the domestic losses are the main criteria for which the country's economies are failing over 80 countries where mostly the average income is quite low have already requested emergency aid from the IMF and this is stretching the IMF to the limit now one thing that she has also mentioned is that it's unknown whether the country's own reserves and domestic resources and everything will be sufficient for every country because IMF is trying to beef up its response to do more do it better and do it faster However, she is very cautiously optimistic and all the IMF members are also cautiously optimistic about how much it can help. They have welcomed the Senate's, US Senate's decision to inject 2.2 trillion economic package in their own country, 
saying that it is absolutely necessary to cushion the world's largest economy against an abrupt drop in economic activities. Because as far as we know and as far as we have seen in every global recession, if the US enters a long-standing recession, it affects the entire market. It creates severe job loss, severe hampering of business and an overall crash in the stock markets throughout the world. So it's absolutely necessary that the US is being cushioned. So at this point in time, the IMF has declared that the world is in recession, but this is not the end yet. There might be a way to reverse it. And it will take definitely a lot of time, but we can always hope that there will be time and we would be able to overcome. At the conclusion, please like our video, please comment your views and please share with your friends. If you if you would please subscribe to our channel, we would also be very happy and please click on the bell icon so that we can give you all the further updates directly. Thank you very much for your time. Stay safe. Stay well.